for our next news special report. Tonight we're diving into something you simply can't afford to miss in a world where the truth often gets masked by political correctness. One voice stands out for its fearless honesty. Donald Trump Jr. on his Triggered podcast has delivered a message so raw and direct it's sending shockwaves across the nation. And we're talking about a no-holds-barred take on the immigration crisis, the crumbling facade of sanctuary cities, and the dire need for real leadership in America. This isn't just another political commentary. It's a wake-up call for every American who cares about the future of our republic. Stay with us as we dissect Trump, Donald Trump Jr.'s words revealing the stark realities our country faces and the path that he proposes. And trust me, you'll want to hear our final thought on this. It's something that could change the way you see our nation's challenges. Now, before we jump on our special report, a quick word from our sponsors who make this crucial reporting possible. Just like the unfiltered truth we bring you daily, there's something else that's vital for our well-being, our health. Excess belly fat, the most dangerous kind, is like unchecked policies harming our nation's core. That's why I, along with many of you, turn to this groundbreaking new supplement. It's scientifically formulated to reduce fat storage, boost metabolism, and support weight management. And the best part? 51% off for the rest of the month. Don't wait until it's too late, just like our country's issues. Visit TrimWithGary.com. That's TrimWithGary.com. The link is in the description. Now, tonight we're peeling back the layers of a narrative that the mainstream media often glosses over. In a recent episode of Triggered Podcast, Donald Trump Jr. didn't just speak. He delivered a hard-hitting message that resonates with the core of America's current struggles. It's a message that many of you have been waiting to hear, one that addresses the issues head-on without sugarcoating that we're used to. Now let's take a look at what Trump Jr. had to say. This isn't just another political rant. It's a deep dive into the realities that are shaping our nation's future. Take a look. We have to start calling this stuff out. Crackheads are doing great while the rest of the country is being destroyed. He doesn't care that hospitals are being overwhelmed with illegals that schools are struggling to keep up with students who can't speak English, that schools are teaching classes in other languages because that's where the majority of their students come from these days and they have no interest in actually assimilating or learning English. But then again, it may be good that he stays as far away from Washington as possible. You know, I think most people would have a problem if the president was gone four out of 10 days. In Joe Biden's presidency, 40% of his time has been spent on vacation. Minor details, folks. Who cares? The Democrat mayor of Eagle Pass was on CNN, Eagle Pass, Texas, saying that Biden is ignoring his border town. Watch and see for yourself. Here in Eagle Pass, we've been getting slammed with two to 3,000 people a day, and it's just a, an unfair unethical situation, what's going on here in Eagle Pass. We feel ignored by the federal government. The migrant crisis extends all throughout the country. Every state is a border state. Every state is suffering from it. Every state is being overwhelmed. Every taxpayer in those state is funding not just them, and their stuff, but a whole slew of illegal immigrants. You have the privilege of paying for yourself as well as millions of other new dependents, many of whom will never add anything to the system that they are happy to take from. Even New York City Mayor Eric Adams says that New York is at a breaking point. New York's at a breaking point, folks. They had, what was it? I think 3,700 new immigrants this week. 3,700. Think of the millions that are coming into Texas. The hundreds of thousands that are coming into Arizona. New York City, with a 12 million population, they're at a breaking point because of a few hundred? Imagine how others are feeling, Eric. Imagine this. I know you were really happy about being a sanctuary city for all these years. You touted it. You ran on it. Now, oh, it's a little different. Because that's what Democrats are. They want you to feel good about what they're doing. They try to make it easy. They don't care what they destroy in the process. They couldn't give a shit. But now, he's singing a different tune. Listen for yourselves. Uh, the erosion of the quality of life that we've improved on in such a short period of time of this administration. And we have been impacted. Uh, for, for many uh, months, we were able to keep the visualization of this crisis from hitting our streets, but we have reached a breaking point. We're no longer able to do that because of the volume and numbers. Just last week, 
We had 3,900 people that arrived here. We are averaging anywhere from 2,500 to close to 4,000 a week. And if you do the math, you see that's 8,000 every two weeks, potentially 16,000 a month that we must feed, clothe, house, educate children, and all the services that you would give a normal adult. And we're seeing that play out on our streets of New York. And that is what the breaking point looks like, what we are experiencing right now. Huh. Huh. I'm wondering, I'm wondering what changed. Like, reality? Like, common sense? The stuff that everyone knew would happen? The reason all of these border states that have had to deal with these problems for years were so abject to these notions of sanctuary cities and laughed about it and made fun of these guys? Huh? It's almost like when everything we've been saying for years actually comes to fruition, the Democrats are shocked that their idiocy, that their fairy tale BS uh, doesn't work out the way anyone with half a brain knew it wouldn't work out. Hard to believe, folks. We're shocked. Though, to be clear, even without a flood of illegal immigrants, New York is at a breaking point because of liberal politicians like Eric Adams. Breitbart reported today that the man who's accused of stabbing, okay, stabbing two teenagers in Grand Central Station on Christmas also yelled, and I quote, I want all the white people dead, close quote. He said that during the attack. On Christmas Day, he can stab two teenagers yelling, I want all the white people dead. And guess what, folks? Just to add a little icing onto the cake of incompetence, he was cut loose by a Bronx judge just weeks earlier, despite a long history of violent criminal activity. Think about that. You can do it, you know, of course. Uh, that's not racist because you can't say you want all the white people dead if you're black because you can't be racist if you're black, we're told, right? These are what they tell us every day. Even if you're saying stuff that if I said it towards any other minority, I'd be in jail. They'd find ways to prosecute me at the Hague for war crimes and hate crimes and all these other things. But no, if you're a 36-year-old Stephen Hutchinson who authorities say launched into an anti-white rant and knifed a 14-year-old girl and her 16-year-old sister who were simply visiting the city from Paraguay <laughs> with their family of all places, right? It's not just stabbing white people, he's stabbing Latin people now. Uh, he's been arrested over 17 times in the last two decades. Released, no problem, it's fine. It's fine. You can stab people with reckless abandon as long as it's in the name of hating white people. <laughs> Guys, there's a clear answer for this problem. It's putting my father back in the White House and stop coddling violent sociopath criminals. Just stop. We don't have to do this. No other country in the world coddles violent criminals. But this is what DEI, you know, the diversity, equity, inclusion, the race baiting, the fake racism, the created nonsense that's out there every day will get you. We keep doing it over and over again. It's Einstein's definition of insanity. Keep doing the same things over and over uh, while hoping to get a different result and then being shocked about why you do. Now let's break it down. Trump Jr. starts by tackling the immigration crisis, a topic that's become a central theme in American politics, yet so often misunderstood or misrepresented. He talks about the real impact of illegal immigration on local communities, overwhelm hospitals, schools struggling to accommodate non-English speaking students. It's not fear mongering. It's the reality that many American cities face daily. And he's not just giving a voice to the unheard. He's shining a light on the policies that have led us to this point. Then he moves on to the irony of sanctuary cities. These cities, once proud of their status, are now buckling under the pressure of their own policies. And he points out the stark consequences of decisions made more for ideological reasons than practical ones. 
It's a call for return to policies that prioritize the well-being and safety of American citizens, a theme that resonates with many of you who feel left behind by the current political system. But he doesn't stop there. He addresses the sensitive issues of race and crime, bringing to light a disturbing incident in New York. This isn't just about pointing fingers. It's about starting a conversation on the broader societal and judicial challenges that we face. His commentary challenges the narrative often pushed by the left, prompting a much-needed discussion about the realities of crime and punishment in our society. Perhaps one of the most compelling parts of his message is his advocacy for his father's return to the White House. In his view, his father, Donald Trump, represents the kind of leadership that's missing in today's political landscape, a leader unafraid to tackle tough issues head-on and put America first. This isn't just about political allegiance. It's about recognizing the need for a leader who can navigate the complexities of our times with strength and conviction. Don Jr.'s rhetorical style is as engaging as it is provocative. He speaks with a directness that's refreshing in an era of political correctness. His use of rhetorical questions and emphatic statements is a strategic choice designed to engage listeners and make them think critically about the issues at hand. This approach is effective in mobilizing support and creating a sense of solidarity among those who share his concerns. Now, the emotional appeal of Trump Jr.'s message is significant. He taps into the fears, frustrations, and hopes of many Americans offering not just a critique of the current state of affairs, but also a vision of what America could be. A vision that resonates with those who feel left behind by the current political system. Those who yearn for a return to policies that put their needs first. Donald Trump's junior segment on Triggered, the podcast, is more than just a commentary on current events. It's a rallying cry for a nation at a crossroads. It's a call to action for those who believe in the principles of law and order, the importance of strong leadership, and the need to address the challenges facing our nation head on. As we navigate these turbulent times, voices like Don Jr.'s are essential in shaping the discourse and guiding us towards a future that reflects the best of what America stands for. If you got value from this report, tap subscribe. And now it's time for my final thought. Now let's be clear. What Donald Trump Jr. has laid out isn't just a series of observations. It's a roadmap for the revival of our great nation. His words stand as a testament to the urgent need for a return to policies that put America and its citizens first. As we look towards the 2024 election, it is imperative that we rally behind the Trump family. The solution to our nation's woes, as Trump Jr. compellingly argues, lies in the leadership of his father, Donald Trump. His return to the White House represents more than just a political victory. It's a beacon of hope for millions of Americans who yearn for a leader unafraid to tackle the tough issues and stand up for the forgotten men and women in this country. Let's stand united in this cause for the future of our republic depends on it. The time to act is now. Let's make America great again. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. Now keep up your quest for truth with this next news report. And if you found our channel enlightening, join the millions who agree with you. Tap subscribe. Thank you for watching the Next News Network.